love you too, Shayna. Pretty mama. Hi, that's she calls me pretty mama. You're my pretty bird. How are you? I'm good. How are you? How are you, pretty bird? Pretty bird. At the end of the day, you never know if you're going to make that lift. I mean, every lift is a new lift. Every time we have a baby born and I have to hand raise it, it's a new baby with its new, unique needs. And I don't know if it's going to survive because some of these birds are so rare. We just don't know what to feed them. We don't know what temperature to keep them at. We don't know when to weed them. We don't know anything about raising them. There's nobody to ask. It's the same thing with doing a lift. You look at that weight and you think, oh shoot, how am I ever going to do this? And then you just block that out of your mind and you do it. And that's such a terrific feeling. It's just a terrific feeling. Um, ever since I was a little girl, I have felt compelled to speak out on behalf of those who can't talk for themselves. I felt as though because I have a voice, it's important to give a voice for those that don't have one. And animals have always appeared to me to be in need of, of assistance. The first bird that I rescued happened totally by accident. I didn't know anything about birds. I wasn't into rescuing birds. But I passed a hurt bird on by the side of the road on St. Lawrence Expressway. And it bothered me that the bird would lie there without anyone helping it. So I doubled back and I picked it up and I took it to a vet. And I was more optimistic than she was because I went every day and visited it. And it seemed to be improving to me. But on day four, I got a call from the vet telling me not to come in because my bird had died overnight. And I started to cry, but I didn't want my children to see me doing this. They were small and I didn't want to have them see mom crying. So I picked up a local newspaper and sat down at the breakfast table where the children were eating their cereal and I hid behind this paper. It turns out that the page that I opened it to, just at random, had a large ad and the ad said, desperately need a home for a white dove. And that was one of the many, many, many coincidences that directed me along the path of becoming a bird rescue. A day in the life of pandemonium starts very early in the morning. It, depending on whether or not we're feeding a baby bird, I'll get up at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I do paperwork or I write from 4 to 7 and we've got babies and it's doing stuff for the babies like feeding them and cleaning, cleaning utensils, cleaning their cages. Uh, 7.30 if he's the first volunteers start to arrive and usually around 7.30 at night the last volunteers leave. And so most of the day I'm either taking care of birds or I'm, I'm taking care of our human helpers. <laughs> Uh, she has an incredible demand on her time and energy running Pandemonium. She's writing a book. She's basically been writing the book since I met her. It's been a three-year project or more, I'm sure, for her. Pandemonium continues to grow throughout the course of our relationship and our training together. And yet she still finds time to dedicate every week to training, not only to keep herself in shape, but to compete and to win competitions and such. And I think that keeping that balance in her life really does help keep her mentally and physically healthy. And then it's challenging because there are a lot of days where she's exhausted and, uh, you know, as a coach, you have to sort of keep that in balance. You learn when to push and when to pull back and let her sort of like, you know, have her moments of weakness and when, to, when she's feeling good and feeling strong, you push a little harder and get a little bit more out of it. Every time you add more weight to the bar, there is both a physical and mental obstacle to overcome. It is not a sport that comes without some amount of sort of daunting fear. I mean, it's always a little bit scary to throw a heavy weight up over your head and catch it. And I think that that's really good mental training for overcoming obstacles in life. You learn to face your fears head on and then grab them hard and sort of yank on them with all your might. And Michelle is really good at doing that, obviously. Taking on something as big as pandemonium is a huge, uh, you know, a huge weight to be lifting. And I think every time she conquers a new weight in the gym, it's sort of a mini exercise in conquering those same sort of obstacles in pandemonium. As big weights present themselves, she gets really good at handling them and lifting them overhead. So pandemonium's goal has changed over time. In the beginning, our goal was to just save individual birds that needed, needed aviaries. It now has become much more focused. And through a series of happenstances, we have ended up with some very unique and special birds that are endangered in the wild. These birds are from New Guinea, and there's very little conservation being done on site in New Guinea. 
And so Pandemonium's mission right now is to save five species of birds from possible extinction by having them in captivity, by breeding them, and at one point when the land is safe for them, returning them to the wilds of New Guinea. Well, we're already seeing what happens when species of birds become extinct because it is happening and it's predicted to continue to happen unless we do something dramatically different in our relationship to the natural world. Uh, what happens when the niche that birds uh, occupy suddenly is left vacant is that everything gets out of balance. Other animals um, suffer, the earth itself suffers. Um, in general, I think we as people suffer because the integral whole really can only exist with each of its parts intact. And if only on a small basis you think about the backyard birds that used to be around all the time and in the last 10 years, just a mere 10 years, have disappeared, you get a sense of the silence that would happen if birds disappeared. We don't really know a lot about how to care for these birds. And when they get sick, we don't know how to make them well. We don't even really know how to, what to feed them. So you know, sometimes you guess, you guess wrong. And that part is really heart rendering. You really have to trust that everything's going to be OK. You have to act even though you don't know what the right answer is. You have to give it everything you've got, plus stuff that you didn't think you had. And you have to do it in a way where if you fail, you pick yourself up and you just keep going.